So this video is going to be about my process for developing a procedural running animation. The first thing I did was start with just forward kinematics. I controlled the angles of the leg joints using easing functions. So I had custom easing functions from a Bezier curve. I found this library that allows you to turn a Bezier curve into an XY function. So you can basically get a point along the timeline of an easing function and it will return the percentage of the animation that it should be completed. So I've been working on my custom 3D animation rig a lot. So that's why I was kind of in this in this zone of like using easing functions. Turns out I don't think this is the best way to approach this. I think inverse kinematics, you know, is the way to go to get like a realistic uh, running animation that interacts and has like the foot actually colliding with the terrain. But my thinking was that maybe I could use the easing functions to get the foot to follow a curve with a flat bottom, kind of like Teo Janssen's Strand Beast, how he created a linkage configuration that generates a foot with a curve with a flat bottom. Uh, I played around with it for a while, but the issue is that uh, the Bezier curve um, library I was using to turn the Bezier curve into a function only works if the control point is vertically aligned to the anchor point. So my idea for maybe like stitching together Bezier curves to create, you know, infinitely infinitely adjustable and like really complex curves was kind of out the window until I could find a, a way to do it myself or a library for a Bezier curve, turning it into a function, which has uh, the endpoints with a non-zero slope is another way of saying it. Anyway, so if you know of one, a good one for parameterizing a Bezier curve, let me know in the comments, because that would be super helpful. So yeah, I pretty much abandoned the idea of using FK to do all this and just went back to inverse kinematics. So I went back to the code that I had from the video I did on coding an inverse kinematic arm in 10 minutes. And this function is great, I think, because it doesn't deal with the angles or anything. You just give it the two points and the two leg lengths, and it will figure out the third point. So if you know the position of the hip and the position of the foot, and then you know the, the bone lengths of the upper and lower leg, you input those into this IK function and it will return the position of the knee. So I incorporated that into a sketch where it was sort of interactable. So I had the position of the hip be controlled by the mouse. And then when the hip was far enough away from the foot such that the leg was fully extended, I used the previous mouse position and the current mouse position to calculate the speed that the hip was moving and make the hip sort of like jump up into the air. And from there, the hip would be controlled by just projectile physics, just the force of gravity, until it was again within range of the ground. And then it would go back to allowing me to use the mouse to control the position. So I could sort of drag the mouse around and jump the leg up and down, which is cool. Also in doing this, realize like there's sort of like a springiness to this, that like the leg kind of like looks like a spring. Um, and this was, I guess, the major breakthrough. It's not actually like an original idea to me though. It's uh, in robotics, it's called an, a slip, a spring-loaded inverted pendulum. And it's a, it's a common um, way of modeling legs for locomotion. Like I'm pretty sure this was one of the early fundamental ideas that went into creating Big Dog and other robots at Boston Dynamics. So that little kernel of robotics information in the back of my brain definitely like was ignited. And I thought, okay, create some way to have the leg act like a spring when it's touching the ground, and then just use projectile motion to make the leg jump through the air when you're in the up pose of the run and you know, you're jumping through the air. Because running, you're really just jumping from one foot to the other, back and forth. So for spring physics, the force of a spring is equal to the displacement of the spring times some spring constant. So said another way, the force, the spring force is proportional to the displacement of the spring. So when you press the spring, the further you press it, the more spring force you're gonna get, you know? So 
in calculating the displacement of the leg, you can think of the uncompressed length of the leg as just the total length of the extended leg. And then you can calculate the compressed length as the distance from the hip to the foot. So I did that and then applied that force right to the acceleration of the hip and then applied that acceleration to the velocity and that velocity to the position of the hip on every frame to create a little spring simulation. I had to handle the, condi handle the condition when the leg was fully extended. So when it reached full extension, I had it sort of just jump off the ground. And at this point, I'm just having the foot. I have to control the position of the foot as well in order for it to not just remain on the ground when the hip bounces up. So it, the foot is fixed until the leg reaches full extension. And then you switch from spring physics to projectile physics. And the foot needs to just move in some relation to the hip, basically. So once I had this this leg that could, could bounce and sort of looked pretty good, I uh, threw in variable terrain. So I used Perlin noise to generate an array of values right around my ground height and then drew lines to represent, you know, show the ground there and then had the, had the foot just bounce along. At this point, I wasn't really um, incorporating the X velocity from the force of the spring though. The X velocity was pretty much constant and the Y velocity was controlled by the spring. So this is sort of like, you know, I, I sort of faked it in this sense, like, the uh, spring is not in influencing the X velocity. If it was, it would just you know be bouncing out of control pretty quickly or falling over. Um, so we're moving along at a constant rate, and then the foot is just sort of moving to keep up with the hip. So every time the spring reached the leg reaches full extension, the velocity of the foot is determined based on how far behind the foot is. So if the foot's like way far behind the hip and needs to catch up, we'll give it a fast velocity so that it can move and land in, in front of the hip for the next foot strike. And then I uh, added a little rectangle to represent a foot and gave it a rotation so that when it would go off the ground, it would sort of look like the foot had, you know, sort of pushed off the ground. In reality, the, it's just um, something that's being drawn over top of it. It has nothing to do with the actual physics here, but it looks pretty cool. And yeah, so I like that idea and like it's a cool little hopper. It definitely looks, starting to look pretty good. The next thing I wanted to do was duplicate the system. So I would have two spring-loaded leg systems that would trade off, you know, one after the other. So rather than just hopping, I would need to have another leg that would do the exact same thing. And then I would have to figure out what the other leg would be doing while the other one was planted. So this is where it started to get pretty tricky, um, a lot more tricky than just the hopping. So I created an object called rig, which is like my skeletal rig that would hold my hip and my legs. So I created the two legs, sort of did some basic proof of concept stuff with showing that I can move the hip and move the feet and sort of create like a walking running motion. So we're, we're getting somewhere. And then I incorporated in some spring forces to show like, yeah, like we can have one, one leg be the spring and the other one just sort of have the foot just like standing there doing nothing and just getting the basic mechanics back from what I had with the hopper, getting those working for each of the legs. And then it was just gonna be a matter of switching from one leg to another and having the stance leg, you know, the support leg, when it's when it's touching the ground, that's the spring leg, and the other one is just sort of along for the ride relative to the hip, and then they switch. So I had to keep track of a couple things. So it's like when a foot's on the ground, that foot is doing the spring physics. The hip is so the hip is being controlled by the force of the spring of that leg. The other foot is just along for the ride, right? Then when the spring leg reaches full extension, we're off the ground and we're gonna be back to projectile physics. And then the foot that was just along for the ride now needs to 
start moving towards the next foot strike position. And then the second that it strikes the ground, the feet now switch, and the foot that was along for the ride is now the spring foot, and now the other foot is along for the ride. So I gave the feet names. You have the next foot and the swing foot. So next foot is the foot that is going to be hitting the ground next, and the swing foot is, it's kind of a misnomer because it's the foot that is swinging behind when you're jumping, but it's also the foot that's planted. So the second the foot strikes the ground, the next and the swing foot switch. Applying the true force uh, with, you know, the true force of the spring in the X in the Y direction, it'll get out of control pretty fast. And like based on the initial conditions, it'll either speed up without bound or it'll slow down. But it's, you know, it's hard to like balance it. Another thing to think about was getting the foot to strike at the right time and the right distance away from the hip, you know? So if you, if you had a certain hip velocity, initial velocity in the X direction, you'd want to strike the ground out in front of you. Just think about like if you were running and you wanted, you were going really fast and you wanted to slow down, you'd want to get your feet far enough in front of you that you can like absorb the shock and like slow down quickly. So that's all like that I was trying to work with at this, at this point and trying to like dial in these different parameters to get it to look good and get it to, you know, bounce along properly. And it was possible to dial them in like that and get it, get things to like, you know, look pretty good. Obviously, once we add in variable terrain, it's going to get way harder because if you're running along and all of a sudden you're up a couple of units, your knee is now much more bent. So all that perfectly dialed in goes out the window. Plus I wanted to have, you know, variable speed. So I wanted to be able to use the mouse to control the speed. So I created, like, I basically, I did it so that the player will be moving towards the mouse. And at this point it looked like the player was sort of like chasing after the mouse. So of course I had to replace the mouse with a butterfly to make it look like the our little guy here was chasing after a butterfly. So when the mouse was far in front of the player, he would be running really fast towards it. And when the mouse was far behind him, he would be running backwards towards it. It looked best when the next foot would go immediately to the ground. So what I did there is when the velocity of the hip goes from positive to negative, so basically the second the hip starts falling back towards, down towards the ground, I would just snap the next leg to the position that it would need to be at. But that didn't look good, you know, like that, that was too, it's too fast when you do that. So it doesn't look good, but it gives you a precise control over the spring force and the springiness of the next step. So by adding in, what I ended up doing was as soon as the hip starts to fall, I have the next foot move towards the desired foot strike position in proportion to how far away it is from that position now. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually gonna wrap it up here because this devlog is getting a bit long and there are, is a lot more to explain that I wanna get into, which I will in the next video. I need to revisit this code and clean things up, but I hope you got something out of this video and thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks. Bye.